Utopia tonight. So please welcome Wendy Liebman, ladies and gentlemen. Thank welcome. you for that. Well, you know, when you were showing the intro, I was actually Googling uh, mm. how to get out of this. No, I was Googling. <laughs> I was Googling dystopia because I was getting it mixed up with dystopia dysphoria i don't know i just wanted oh, to okay. make sure that it meant total destruction and i yes. guess you this is a podcast about my love life no i'm kidding That's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> happily married 18 yes. years that's what i was that's what i wanted to thank you this is a this is this whole podcast has been an homage to you so um i'm, I'm glad you could make it <laughs> What do you mean? <laughs> no, your love. I don't know. I'm, I'm, just going, I'm going off of what you said about your love life. Oh, I thought we were doing okay. a bit. The dystopia. <laughs> yes. Um. So I wasn't Google. I was googling dystopia, and then I was catching mm. all the like the burning stuff, and um, and yeah. I was, and I actually forgot that I was on camera somewhere, which is really <laughs> dangerous. Like I think in this day and age, you have to always assume that you're mic'd and on camera somewhere, yeah. at least a nanny cam. Like you can no, you can no longer dance like nobody's watching because somebody is always watching. That is that's so true. I actually got paranoid during this whole thing because I had, um, I I bought a thing for my camera because you know like all of us bought equipment. I'm assuming over the like the course of the pandemic and stuff, you know. And so I bought a a nicer you know, video camera thing or whatever to do this kind of shit with. And then after a while, I saw the light going on and I was like, what the fuck is going on? And I got paranoid and I actually bought a cover because I was like, I don't, I feel like people may be watching. I mean, I'm not doing anything, but um, just eating enormous amounts of snack food and cheese and God knows what uh, out of boredom. But yeah, it was like, it's kind of creepy. Well, you know, um, that guy Tubin. Oh was he needed a cover yeah that yes um, he did he i know people who won't even bring their cell phones into their bedroom really yeah i don't care like i oh. just assume some you know what i grew up so like i feel like i grew up so lonely that i'm like oh okay somebody's <laughs> paying attention <laughs> big oh my bro god big brother's watching me finally Somebody, somebody. Used I should to write these me, jokes down. I you, you, well, you know what? Uh, this is all going to be recorded, so I'll send this to oh, you. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. You know what? If you ever have trouble uh, describing another comedian when somebody else doesn't know, unless they're super famous, where you're just like, he was a comic. <laughs> they make me laugh. I don't yes. know. They they tickle me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. You're like there was a. I like a, their a, humor. <laughs> There's a je ne sais quoi. <laughs> Can't you tell right away when somebody's can make you laugh? Like, uh, you oh, can yeah. tell. You can tell. Yeah. Like, like I'm always like, whenever I'm at a friend's party or something like that, and like somebody walks into the room, I'm like, oh, they're going to be great to be around. And then you can tell that like the rest of the room sucks. Well, it's not like I'm judging them. It's just like mm -hmm. you don't need to see five minutes of somebody to get yeah, the yeah. gist. Exactly. You know, I can tell just looking at you that you're hilarious. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I have... <laughs> no, no, gonna... I have this I have this 80-year-old landlady and she used to say, I just look at you and I laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Old I'll take have... it. I'll take it. Yeah. Older people have the most uh, blunt way of complimenting you either before after a show no matter what it is like I've had old people come up after a show who will tell me that they think I'm funny but the other people at their table not so much and I'm like could have done without the last part but thank you I think 
No, I was laughed. the one who laughed. Yes. <laughs> yes. I thought you would. Did laugh. you hear me laughing? Cause I was the one. <laughs> yes. What's the no, weirdest but- compliment you've ever gotten after a show? Do you remember? This was the nicest compliment or the, the thing that really stayed with me the most. Mm-hmm. Um, they said, you don't suck. No, this is, <laughs> um, it was an old woman mm-hmm. and this was in Tahoe. And after the show, she said, I felt like you were just talking to me. <laughs> And I love that. That's so sweet. That's really sweet. I know. I love that. And then I try to do that from now on. I just try to talk to that lady. <laughs> and uh, no, but I mean, I try to talk to an individual because right. you can lose sight that it's a million, you know, 10, yeah. 100, 10 people. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> that is people. Are you one of those? Are you are you are you the type of comic that'll pay? Because I know uh, most of us do this, but I know some of us, you know, have the ability to ignore it. But do you when you see somebody who's miserable, do you focus on them during your set? Are you like whatever, and you just pay attention to the other people? Yeah, I, it's I saw this study not to be like um, too heady, but I saw this study yeah. ab- about infants, and they they had the mothers. This is so cruel, but they had the mothers like <laughs> ignore the baby. Oh. And the baby kept trying to get their attention. And wow. um, I feel like that's what com- comedians do. Like we're trying to get your attention. And mm-hmm. we know we have your attention because you're laughing. So it means you're listening, right? Mm-hmm. And so that one person who's just sitting there with their arms crossed, it's like they don't want to laugh. And you're mm-hmm. like, well, that's my job. But <laughs> like, how yeah. am I going to do it? And so I, I usually pull back, like I get softer. But then I had this one guy, he was like right in front once. And he was like, just like staring at the whole time. And then. Of course, after the show, he was like, that was so funny. Thank you (laughs) so much. And I'm like, oh, my God. (laughs) I guess not everybody laughs. Yeah. Or they don't realize. I feel like there's so many people that aren't used to being out in groups that they, they, they freeze. They have no idea how to react to something or to show that they're having a good time. And it's just like, especially if like, I've noticed like, uh, like if there's a big table full of people, there's always a couple that think they can get away with not responding emotionally to something. And I'm like, we can see all of you though. <laughs> like, it's not, it's not like you're camouflaged because there's other well, people. Right. Around you. Especially now with zoom. Oh like, yeah. I could see everybody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and like, it took me a little while before I started talking to the gallery. That's what Judy oh. Gold, Judy Gold said. It's talking that she talks to the gallery. Yeah. Um, but at first I was just like doing my jokes and I actually had them printed on the screen. So oh, it was like, brilliant. it was like having a, a teleprompter, which is what I need at my age. I'm 56. <laughs> I'm 56 and I started forgetting everything, John, like, oh my um, God. like that I'm 60. <laughs> Oh my God, I, should, I made him I just seen, pitch I, I should have seen that. I should have seen you ready to do it, but I didn't. I just kept drinking because I was like, there's, you don't even, <laughs> that was, that was great. That made my whole, I, I haven't done that yet at all. The entire time we've been doing the show. That was really fun. That I saw good. it happening. And you yeah. know what? I won once in a, in a, um, in Vegas. I won once. And as it was happening, it was like on a slot machine. As it was happening, Mm-hmm. I knew it was happening. And as that was happening, I know I sound a little Los, An- Los Angeles right now. No, no, but, no. Uh, <laughs> You're clairvoyant. But, I get it. But I I'm a I'm psychic. Actually, I'm I'm the opposite of psychic. I don't even know what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea of there being a spit take psychic. Like you have a very specific kind of psychic. <laughs> It's only when a spit take's about to happen. Uh, I can see it coming. That was did fun. You en- did you enjoy the um, the Zoom stuff? Did it take you a while to get into it, or did you jump right in? 
Well, the first time I did it, Jackie Cation let me do her show. I loved you. And I know she's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. She opens for Maria, or she goes on the road with Maria yeah. Bamford, who's also one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. And and Jackie and Lori Kilmartin have a podcast together, and they're just mm -hmm. amazing. Anyway, um, Jackie had me on her Zoom, and it it was the first time I did it, and it was so chaotic. Mm. And I thought, oh my God, this is impossible, but right. I'm just going to keep learning it. And like, whatever we do in comedy, we have to learn new skills, right? Yeah. It's not, it's not just writing jokes and telling them. It's mm -hmm. like everything else, traveling and learning to do press and yeah, um, getting a new ring light. I'm on my second <laughs> ring light, by the way. <laughs> it's, you're not even kidding, though. That's a difficult thing to do. It took me, if Tom was in the room right now, he would tell you, it took me a long time to figure out lighting, like to actually make sure it looked okay. And he was like, and, and finally, at one point, he just started sending me shit. He was like, just order these <laughs> and set them up around your fucking computer. Because I was just like, I think I have a tiny one. And he was like. No, no, I know. You have to learn how to do it. Like Corey Kahaney told me I needed a microphone, which I did. And mm. um, she said, you can't hear your punchlines. Or, you know, it was like yeah. I needed them. So, okay. So did I like it? Um, it was, it kept me busy. It's a good way to put it. <laughs> and it is. I wrote some new jokes. I wrote a lot of new jokes. Yeah. So, it I I didn't like it for the longest time and um I didn't do a I didn't do a ton of them but when I I liked kind of um exercising new muscles cuz it is kind of like a a different pacing almost or a different kind of like like what Judy had said you she told you like to kind of talk to the gallery and stuff like that I didn't realize you could do that in the beginning so I wasn't acknowledging them at all and then I realized how much fun it is to kind of see what everybody has in their living room and how they, you know, because people forget that you can see them and right. that's the fun of it. Right. And I think a lot of what people like about laughing in a club is that they're anonymous. Yes. So there were some people in the gallery who, when you said, oh, is Marianne not getting any of these jokes? And she would be like, oh, like. <laughs> <laughs> You called but, them out on it. Um, yeah, but this, I did this one show, Sammy Obiad. I, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Okay. And um, he invited me back a couple of times, and the audience was the same each time. And there was always this oh one guy who had, he would blow, um, he was smoking a bong, and then his whole square was full of smoke. Oh my God, that's hilarious. <laughs> So he became part of the show. Oh, and that's I, great. Um, yeah. So it was very interesting. And I don't think I will stop doing them if I'm asked to do more. I will. It's easy. It's easier than traveling. And I can yeah. just go out um, of my office and get a snack. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm doing the, have you done the um, Nowhere Comedy Club yet? I did do that twice. Twice. That nice. was great. Yes, I'm you're doing, doing that. The, yeah, I'm doing it at the end of July for the first time. Uh, I'm excited about it. So it's uh, I've never done that yet. Is it fun? Have you have you done? Oh yeah, have oh. you done live shows? Yes, I did my uh, first live show back in New York a couple weeks ago, um, and I was I almost canceled. And one of my friends was like, "Stop! Like, <laughs> like just come into the city." You'll be fine once you get it. You'll, you're gonna admit, you're gonna love it. And she was absolutely right. But like that whole, it, it got down to the like I I had booked the show. I knew I was doing it. And then that week, I don't know, I don't know what it was, but I was like, I can't, I can't go back. I, I'm not ready. And you know, I don't know what everybody's doing. And I haven't been on stage in you know like a year. I'm like, it's gonna be weird. She was like, just shut the fuck up, <laughs> and and come in. And I did, and it was amazing. So um, you still listen to your mother. <laughs> <laughs> yes you um, see right through me wait so so how was it is what i want to know it was it was good it was actually i had a good set i i um i did um i was proud because i did stuff that i had actually worked on 
during Zoom stuff. Like I actually, I was nice to see those jokes because that was the biggest thing was I was like, man, are these jokes going to carry over into the club, even though they kind of worked on Zoom and some of them did, some of them didn't. Um, but I had a great set and it was fun being in front of a live audience again. And they like, the energy from them is what carried me kind of through it too, because they were just excited. So I, I would, that kind of surprised me because I didn't know how they were going to be. I didn't know if they were going to be weird or not. And man, they were just happy to be out. Um, I think they have a lot of backed up laughter that just needs <laughs> to come out. It's like, I mean, we watched a lot of funny things. We, my yeah. husband and I, we just, yesterday we just finished the 11th season of Cheers. Oh my which God. You probably were born before. I mean, yes. after. Yeah. No, well, yeah, I was born in 84, but I remember, I remember why I remember the, I watched Cheers a lot. Cause I watched a lot of classic yeah. TV, but I, I wasn't around, I guess when it was first on. It's so funny. I, I guess yeah. I haven't seen it when it was first though. I saw some episodes, but like mm -hmm. just watching the whole thing through was, yeah, really great such great writing such great oh, acting and then i'm also watching my husband won't watch this with me i'm watching the golden girls okay so uh <laughs> so sue me but i, I um, love that show do you oh absolutely um I'm obsessed yeah I'm obsessed it's i was watching it the show. other night it was two o'clock they, they have it on at the best time for comedians because we never sleep so it was like two o'clock in the morning and there's like five episodes on back to back. And I just, uh, listened I to know. Estelle Getty. Oh my uh, God. Great B. Arthur. She's so funny. She once came to Vegas to see me open for Ray Charles. Oh my God. Yeah. I opened for a few people in Vegas. That's so incredible. Either Ray Charles or Anne Margaret. <laughs> and <Wow. work. laughs> but Estelle Getty came and then I introduced her in the audience oh my god and then they sh she was sitting over there and they showed mm -hmm. shown the light over there <laughs> like they couldn't <laughs> find her she's a tiny woman she is a tiny woman she's yeah like four ten or something I have to ask you about uh Ray Charles and Ann Margaret but I also do you remember the move the, the only movie I remember Estelle Getty being in was one that I liked when I was younger do you this is embarrassing because no this is like one of those guilty pleasure things uh with Andrew McCarthy the mannequin do you remember that movie I don't remember that movie I love Andrew McCarthy I think his son is an actor now or he's oh, is he really or some, I'm making this up <laughs> um no like i remember reading something about andrew mccarthy recently and it was either oh. that he was directing or that he was starting to act again or that his son was acting i don't know oh, that's awesome. but um i didn't see mannequin oh okay well she's in it and it's the only movie i've seen her in <laughs> and it's the only thing i've seen her in it was one of those things that blew my mind like because you know i thought she was that older woman from golden girls always and then all of a sudden i saw her in that movie and i was like doing like the math for like the time and i was like she looks amazing. <laughs> I was like, what is this? Oh, and yeah, yeah, I didn't realize that they had to like actually age her down in Golden Girls. They aged her. Or aged but, her up, sorry. Up. Yeah, yeah, but they up. also, but they also between the first and the second seasons. Wow, this your your podcast is turning into a Golden Girls. <laughs> I'm thrilled about it. I'll put on my Golden Girls shirt right now. I'll do a wardrobe change. I'm dying right now. I'm <laughs> So happy right now. Okay. Um, so uh, between the first and second season, Estelle mm -hmm. Getty had a facelift. No. So she made herself look younger. So they had to make her look even older. Oh my God. I have no, I had no idea. That's hilarious. But in real life, I am like the age of the age that Betty White was supposed to be when she was first on the show. Oh, wow. Okay. So wait, will so you look 60. Amazing? Okay. Thank you. My mom just turned 60. She'll be six. Oh, I shouldn't say that on the air. Um, but I <laughs> just realizing uh, what people don't like that. Um, she's great. <laughs> 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 I forgot we were uh, live and uh, this is going places. Oh. So yeah, she's good. She'll be, no, she's fine. She'll be 62 in August, I think. Yeah. 
um so but uh so she you guys are you guys should hang out wait i'm so you <sighs> could be now. my son you could there's be a my whole, son yes mm -hmm. there was a there's a whole that thing so in my head cute. where it was going stop yeah. <laughs> you can erase <laughs> yeah no can't i'm gonna erase. cut all that out okay that's hilarious um, but you but are yes, well, you are young enough to be my son, and that's the yes. important part. <laughs> yeah, yes, which I would love to be if you're looking to adopt. I'll I'll just move. <laughs> well, I raised two stepsons. You did. And, um, I did. They were four and eight, and now they are twenty six and thirty. If the math works, <laughs> um, but they are. Yeah, I can't. I believe in God because of them, because I just would never have gotten um, the opportunity to change somebody's life so much, I guess. It, yeah. Can you right. erase that part too? Sure. Yeah, we could do. We <laughs> erase it all. It's true. I do. It's I do, true. But I do like how that's kind of open ended because you like, you, you said I changed their life so much. And I'm like, did she really fuck with them? Do they think like a chair is something else? Because that's great. <laughs> like you taught them, like you just the whole a whole different perspective, yeah, or you just, raise them well. Just, just give giving love. Yes, that's awesome. Well, yeah. that's I can't even imagine. Like, so you're well. I, okay, let's go back real quick because I want to ask you about what was it like. Do you do you enjoy? Because I feel like um, a lot of the comics that I've talked to on here, a lot of my favorite comedians opened for. Um, you said you opened for Ray Charles or Anne Margaret. I feel like that doesn't happen that much anymore where there's no like combined thing with musicians or whatever. Did you enjoy that? Was that a fun thing or was it kind of nightmarish to do it? I loved it. And hmm. part of the reason that I don't get asked to do that anymore is because my agent then left that agency that also booked those acts. Oh. I got to open for like Sheena Easton and oh my God. Um, Frankie Valli and the Four oh. Seasons. There may wow. have been only there may have been only three, but um, okay, three seasons. Okay, three seasons: summer, winter, yeah. and fall. Yeah, uh. um, but I got to open for like. Um, <laughs> Tanya Tucker and Reba McIntyre. Oh my God. Yeah. That's so it was so a cool. different, it was a different time. It was mm -hmm. a different time. Like I got interesting gigs, like performing on um, a boat wow. during Super Bowl weekend that the Indianapolis Colts manager wanted to have a party for his friends during Super Bowl. It was in San oh Diego. God. And so he had me open for dan fogelberg you probably don't know him, no but i but, do no no okay, no I you do totally know who dan fogelberg is yes absolutely okay they play a lot of him on, on the golden girls no not really <laughs> <laughs> oh, i love that oh my uh, god i'm making myself sick okay so um <laughs> So, yeah, Dan Fogelberg was there, but one mm. of the guests on the boat was Stephen Stills. Wow. And after Dan Fogelberg sang, Stephen Stills sang Love the One You're With. Oh and I, I had a flip phone at the time, and I'm holding it up <laughs> so my sister can hear it. Oh, wow. But, I mean, that's the kind of gig I had in the early 90s that mm. I go I pinch myself I'm like oh my god that was surreal yeah well I was th that's a that's a cool thing to think about though too because you're one of those comics that's so unique and well liked and also well known yeah. enough where like people acquire you you know what I mean like do you do you ever do you ever think about that or did you think about that at the time that like you're actually selected specifically. Like people are like, I'm gonna have a huge party on a boat with Stephen Stills and Dan <laughs> Fogelberg, and I would like a Wendy Liebman, and they just pick you up. And like, it's it's so crazy to think that like you know that uh, that it's it's cool. It's just an awesome thing because I don't think a lot of people get that experience. Did you feel like that at the time, or were you like, yeah, no, this is normal? <laughs> I was not aware of everything that was happening was mm. very exciting and i feel like now i'm reflecting in a just 
I I love thinking about it and I'm trying mm -hmm. to write or I'm not trying. I am writing a musical about stand up. Oh, no way. Um, well, that's the backdrop. It's about three stand ups in Vegas over Valentine's Day weekend right after Trump was elected. And there's one comedian who's very political and there's mm. lots of love stories going on. And so I feel like I'm using everything that I have absorbed from doing stand up. Um, plus my material. <laughs> that's incredible. That, so, I, I'm excited for that. Thank you. And yeah, that's uh, so cool. yeah I've been writing the music and um, oh. I'm not, so, I'm not a musician, but I've been, I mean, I, I'm not a trained musician. Right. Well, you're, you're, so your husband is Jeffrey Sherman, whose uncle and father were the Sherman brothers. I'm sure. Does that, do you guys, are you collaborating on this kind of thing? Like, is that fun to work on with somebody or are you doing it all on your own? So I've done it all by myself up until now, but mm -hmm. I actually asked my one of my stepsons. Um, he seemed interested in writing the music for one of the songs, and oh, then so cool. my husband Jeffrey said he will help me with the rest. Nice. Um, and I mean, every song I've written so far sounds like chopsticks, but. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> super easy to learn <laughs> but different you know people can play with it yeah <laughs> make it make it their own but people can play with it <laughs> oh, it's so great uh, i yeah, love you know, making we, you laugh oh you're uh, I'm, you crack me up so much. when we did the charity <laughs> thing i la i made sure that i was because we were um, we were on we were on like uh, god man i was up for like two days straight or whatever but i made sure that when you were going to be on, I was going to be awake no matter what. I think I had like five cups of coffee because I just wanted to be on the air with you when you when you were yeah. when you popped in. So that was exciting. Um, yeah, you have a, you have an incredibly talented family. And by the way, thank you for entertaining because I've I've messaged you a couple times as I've discovered certain things that your family has done and and Jeffrey's done or whatever. And one of them was this is my favorite thing that you even acknowledged this and that and that he commented on it too was. The ugly bug ball is that's a huge <laughs> part of my childhood. Really? Like, oh my God. I had, I think I drove my family insane because that's the song that would shut me up when I was a kid. Like they would pop in this tape and it was Burr Lives and the Ugly Bug Ball. And I would just sit in front of the TV and uh and just like zone out. I loved that. I could I just said it now and I'm it's already playing in my head. Um, but yeah, and I, I, and I messaged you about it and you were just like, yes. And you told me some interesting stuff about it. So it was well, cool. I don't remember what I told you because I'm 62. <laughs> no, I, I'm not doing that, okay. I'm not doing, I'm not doing that joke anymore. I'm 60. I'm 60. Okay. okay. Um, but um, I was born to be 60, by the way. Oh. But um, the ugly bug ball, I hadn't seen until I met my husband. Oh, I wow. hadn't seen that. But I love it. It's so yeah. sweet. It is very sweet, and it teaches a great lesson too. And and right. you know, and and Burr Lives is just a, a he. When that guy was doing whatever, anything he was doing or whatever, he just seemed like he. You knew him. He was part of the family. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, my husband Jeffrey and his cousin Greg mm -hmm. Sherman. They did a documentary about their fathers called The Boys, I and it's on. That. It's on Disney Plus, and yep. um, it just shows how they wrote all this music, super califragilistic, and feed the birds, and yes. chitty chitty bang bang. But you don't know them, so that's what the documentary shows. They're con they had a lot of conflict. Yeah, yeah. Um, that it was it was a cool thing to watch. I watched with my mom because we like you know she was kind of like my introduction to all the Disney stuff when I was younger and dick van dyke show and just dick van dyke in general so like all that stuff comes from her so we kind of bond over that um even though i just told everybody her age and when her birthday is uh... <laughs> hey i once had to follow a i was doing a show at a temple and i had to follow like a dirge um so yeah. oh wow that's and uh i'm old enough to i i remember like they declared war on Iraq, and the, so they turned the TV on in, in the club, oh, <laughs> or it course. was a sports bar, and then so there was war on Iraq, and then and now a comedy show. Mm. So, I did a I did a Sandy benefit 
Um, because my when when Sandy hit, my parents lost their house, you know, in Sandy, and then you know, I mean, it would just it just fucked all of us up and we were you know yeah um and I, I was living in an apartment and you know i mean the worst thing that happened to me and my roommate at the time we were on the second floor so nothing really happened but um we just had no power for like two three weeks because everything went down but i did this handy benefit and right before <laughs> they introduced the comedians <laughs> they just did it's terrible but they did this montage of like uh houses like homes that were like literally wrecked and i was like are you fucking with this like sad song in the in right. the background and i was just like oh, okay. <laughs> i okay. know it's like and all the and of course like there's victims in the place because we're doing it to benefit them in the first place so i'm like cool 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 yeah well the um the good thing is you had no power so you couldn't watch it again <laughs> <laughs> when they showed it on tv but yes. um no i mean those are the challenges. It's like playing golf. We can't choose yeah. the variables. And right. uh, so we just have to deal with it. That's yeah. part of what, like I always think part of our job is we have to assume leadership, right? When you're Ooh. on stage, you're the, yes. le you're the leader, which is why men don't think women should be there. But oh, or, okay. that's changing. That's changing. Yeah, yeah. But um but so you're the leader and you have to, in case of emergency, make everybody calm somehow and get their attention. Mm. And so like, for example, I was performing once and the fire alarm went off and it was in a casino. And um, I don't know, I had to make some jokes about it. Like somebody won or, you know, something. Mm -hmm. um, and then remain like, I had to convince them it wasn't part of my act <laughs> <laughs> and just remain in, in control and calm. Like that's yeah. why, that's why we get the big bucks. Yeah, you're <laughs> absolutely right. And you know what I, you just, I think I just had an epiphany when you said the thing about, um, you know, you have to be a leader when you're on stage, if you're a comic, that's why people don't think women can do yada yada. Because I think that's never crossed my mind because I think my dad was such a fuck up when I was younger that I always looked to my mom. So I don't, I don't think that way. When I do see the mm. there's a woman in charge, I'm like, thank God, someone who knows what they're doing. Mm. So that's very like I was like, oh, I don't think that, and I was like, why? So don't you I think like, that? like you like female com comics? Oh God, yeah, of course, yeah. You got the, there's a, a list that I that I can't even like go into that i one that i'd like to have on this show and talk to but two that i just love like even even growing up like doing stand-up and stuff like jessica kirsten was super i don't know if you know jess oh, um, oh, oh. oh i love her i just Me did too. her documentary although i just saw gray hair hold on <laughs> wait this is backwards <laughs> No. I love that. Oh my god. Oh, you're the best. <laughs> I'm um, a pro comic. I know. <laughs> that's when did that of, happen? That's what Zoom shows in COVID. We're just grabbing anything on our desks. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Um, but yeah, I was saying Jess was, was super nice to me when I started and just like amazing and you know, um yeah, no, I look I, I want to go back to something you said though. Sure. Because I cut you off. This oh, okay. was like four paragraphs ago. You, <laughs> you said your stepfather died. Yes, 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 yes. And then you were telling me something about your mother. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. I was saying, yeah, I know my... Um... See, I should have been a therapist. <laughs> you should. This would have been... You should have a therapy, po therapy comedy podcast. You're like, absolutely not, but thank you for trying. No, uh, I mean, I <laughs> thought of doing things like that before because I was going to be a therapist. Oh, wait, but, that's right. You majored in psychology, right? Yeah. And it's, I didn't, I never became, a, I just went into therapy. I didn't become hmm. a therapist. <laughs> but um, I, because I didn't want to listen to, I'd rather make a hundred people laugh than one person cry. That's oh. what I, that's, that's what I thought. Well, let me but, ask you this though. Yeah. Are you serious about, do you, have you gone into, like, do you go to a therapist? Or have you gone into probably to, to, for to forty that? for forty years? Oh, for forty years. Okay. Is <laughs> it weird? Is it weird? Like having studied psychology and then being in the? Does it make it difficult to be in a room with a therapist when you're like, I know the tricks, or no? 
No, because um, she doesn't say anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there's no tricks. Um, she she's from Wanta, I think. Oh, okay. Oh, that's. Um, I don't know how to answer that question. I I don't, don't think I don't think my training because it was only undergrad. <laughs> okay. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just thought, I, I was wondering because I was like, it's it's. I was wondering if it's like the same kind of thing when like you're a comedian for so many years and then you watch another comedian on stage and you're like, oh, I know what they're doing. I see the trick, and I've never talked to somebody who actually studied psychology and then actually went into it. If they're just uh, like, I see what you're doing. Oh, you're trying yeah. to get me to cry. I'm is your mother that. is your mother a therapist? No, 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 no. Um, she's she's a good listener. Um, but she's, uh, no, she's, she worked at a, uh, she ran like a state park for years. That's what she wound up doing. And she just retired. Um, she retired before COVID, which is unfortunate because she didn't have much time to enjoy and embrace, um, the retirement part of it. She was like, Oh, I get to do whatever I want. And then COVID happened. And she was like, I get to do nothing. And then I had to do, and I, I went out and thank God I was here because I got to do all the shopping and all that other crap, which I didn't even do for myself when I was, when I was living by myself. <laughs> When I was out and whatever, like I, I went to stores, but it, I didn't, I don't cook. I don't do any of that shit. So like I was constantly on like FaceTime, like, is this the chicken that we need? Or she's like a little left. I'm like, oh, okay. You, you um, don't know how to cook? Oh, well, I don't not know how I'm just not like, uh, I'm, I'm looking for another word other than lazy. Give me a second. Oh. See, I, I, always joke about that I can't cook mm -hmm. and I have found sometimes um when I joke about something it becomes true oh. um but anyway I joke about that I can't cook like my food has a before taste and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't even get that joke I know but that's so smart it's know, so it's great so though stupid. um but I decided <laughs> over the pandemic I really love to cook, but what I don't like mm. is cleaning up. So I think I'm, I've been thinking about becoming a chef. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have to do any of this. <laughs> that's, uh, that's they just brilliant. leave it. Yeah, they do. And then everybody so, else picks up. Yeah. Yeah. I don't enjoy the cleaning at all either. And I'm one of those people who's like, uh, I'm a bad environmentalist. Like I'm not, I don't even consider myself an environmentalist, but I'm one of those people who will bitch about how the planet's going to hell, but also paper oh plates, plastics. Oh. When I, when I lived in my, in my apartment, there wasn't, I, I think I had plates and stuff that people gave me. I just never used them. Cause I was like, that's going to have to get washed. And if I, that's Ooh. not going to happen. So that, yeah, is, just, that is lazy. Yes. <laughs> Because but, also, how often am I? How often are you home when you're a con? You know, when you're especially when you're single right. and you're living by yourself. Like, I wasn't gonna be cooking dinner for, you know. I, I remember dating uh, this one girl who would literally try to make me. She'd be like, "We're gonna cook tonight," and I'd be like, "Are we though?" Like, <laughs> like <laughs> maybe isn't that what we're she doing. Was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but um, yeah, ten times a day, I say, "I'm sorry, Greta Gunberg." Is that her name? <laughs> Ten times a day. I'm sorry, Greta Gumber. Like if I'm throwing away a straw. Oh or, yeah. Because I I I don't even know what I should put in the recycle bin exactly. Yeah. I I feel terrible about this. Yeah, and then you know it's one of those things where it's nine times at it. Look, I'll say not even to get it too too deep into it, but here's my thing on it too. Right, I feel like you can we can all be advocates for a better earth and and for climate change and whatever but unless like governments get involved and they stop going for the capitalistic approach and all that other shit then then think about how much incrementally we've been told to do since the 80s and how little of an impact it's had because it's people are still bitching about it so what can i personally do right, without because, inconveniencing myself because i was at some um retirement community and they showed me that people would separate their cans and all that mm -hmm. it was all picked up and thrown in the same truck like yes. they so i go well why am like i don't know what to do right. 
Yeah, so, well, they figured um, out a way to chart. Like, th- that's another thing, too, is they just, you know, th- our system or society or whatever kind of figured out a way to um, profit off of performative uh, climate change shit. So they were like, oh, well, if people don't recycle and you have to buy a second can and a third can and then we're going to charge you extra for plastic. I sound like I should be shrugging my shoulders, Bernie Sanders style. Uh, <laughs> and they, you know, but, but that's what they do. And then, uh, you know, so you do so only can do so much. And, and then these, it's funny because uh, I loved when Starbucks was like, we're getting rid of straws. And I was like, but you're making plastic lids. And that's, that's still winding up in the ocean. Now you can use, now they'll give you a cup and you can bring it back. And oh, I don't know. Right. I haven't been to Starbucks. I have saved so much money over the pandemic on not buying Starbucks, I put an extra wing on the house. <laughs> no, I so have- You're turning into a Starbucks. Exactly. <laughs> That's why Jeff Bezos is up there. Um, is there John, a Deadpool on whether he comes back? Oh yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was I was trying to think, I, I keep making no, mental notes of this is what I want to tell you and now I totally oh. forgot, but, um, uh, yeah, so I totally forgot. <laughs> well, it's fine because I'll ask you because we can we can go into because I I love to know. Um, do you remember? I ask like every comic this. I'm kind of fascinated by it because some people have no recollection of this whatsoever. But and I don't know if I do just because yeah you know I don't I'm like a comedy nerd or whatever. But do you remember your first paid gig? Like actually somebody going, I want to pay you to do. You do. I love that. Thank. What, what do you remember? What was it? I have two first paid gigs that I remember. Oh, nice. So the first was at a bar called the International Pub in Revere, Massachusetts. Mm. And there was a pool table in the middle of the room. Mm-hmm. And I was on stage. I, I opened for a comedy team named Zito and Bean. And oh Zito is Chris Zito, and he still performs, and he's a radio personality. And Steve Bean unfortunately passed away last year, oh, but no. um, I know. But so I remember they paid me. It was like Joe Amaraso was the producer, and he paid mm-hmm. me twenty five dollars. He put it in an envelope, and it was singles. Okay. Okay. So. Mm-hmm. And then I'll tell you about my second gig, but I want to say like in, in the perfect poetry or symmetry of things on the day before I moved from Boston to LA, I ran into Joe Amaraso in, oh my God. in the supermarket. And it was just like this full circle thing. Like, thanks for that's giving a- me that. Yeah. Yeah. So- that's beautiful. And also, I'm in that, like that money, the envelope money thing is so cool to me, but like, it's still so cool to me because that's what I imagined when I was younger that that's, you know, people got like cash in an envelope and, you know, for, for doing like, that's so cool to me that that's how you got your first paid gig. Somebody, I don't know who it was. I wish I could give them credit for it, but they said that they realized they were wearing clothes that they made, that they bought with money that they made from telling jokes that they thought. (sighs) Right. And it's like, wow. Um, my second paid gig was at a club in Holyoke, Massachusetts called the 141 Elm Street. And for me, it was a nightmare. Um, I opened for Dennis Leary. And oh my God. He, it was two and a half hours in driving rain. I didn't go with him. I, okay. But I just remember by the time I got there, Mm-hmm. I was usually more nervous about finding the gig than I was ever about performing because this is before yeah. GPS. Be- like it was impossible that right. that part of my job. I wish I didn't have to have, but but anyway. Yeah. So I opened for for Dennis. He killed in front of eight people, <laughs> and they paid me. I don't think it was in cash, but um, okay. It was, yeah, those are my two. It's weird I that wonder, you said Dennis Leary. What ever happened to Dennis Leary? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you never hear from that guy anymore. Uh, <laughs> y- there's a. <laughs> it's weird that you said Dennis Leary because I've only ever heard of Zito and Bean and looked them up years ago because Dennis was on. I'm saying Dennis like I know him personally. Dennis Leary was on the show uh, on the Daily Show with John Stewart, and they were talking about comedy gigs. 
and they mentioned Zito and Bean, and I and I love looking up comics I've never heard, so I'd never heard of their, them before, and wound up looking them up. So I was about to tell you, I only know them because Dennis and John had said they had done a Zito and Bean gig. What, what are the odds? Yeah. That's crazy, John. Yeah. I know, I know. I was like, you said Zito and Bean, I was like, I only know them because of The Daily Show. They were so funny. I would see them perform at Play It Again Sam's, which is run by Barry Katz, who then yeah. started the New York or the New York Comedy or the Boston Comedy Club. In Boston New York. Comedy Club. And um, yeah, he he gave me my second paid gig. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah. What about you? What was your my, first paid gig? <laughs> my first my first paid gig was um, for a a woman who saw me in New York who was starting out doing stand up and she had a one woman show, a theater show. And she liked me for whatever reason and was like, you need to come to New Jersey. And uh, she had rented out a small theater space and um, uh, it, it, went, it was a really small theater. I can't remember where in New Jersey, but um yeah, and she was like, "Would you would you be the comic that opens up for my one woman show?" And it was great because it was my first paid gig, and she gave me like one hundred and fifty bucks. I didn't deserve okay. it. <laughs> um, I was I wow. was like way too new, but uh, yeah, that was my first. She saw me at Gotham, and I was like, and I think it was only. I think I'd only been doing it for a, a, maybe like a less than a year, like six months in or whatever. And she was like, would you come open for my one woman show? And I had no idea oh. who she was. Yeah. And, and so that, did that show prevail? Uh, no, uh, that went nowhere. Uh, oh. <laughs> but it was, I mean, she, she definitely like, she would keep in touch, I think over the years. Cause she would just, she would just rent out these spaces and kept trying to do her thing. And, um, and it was great, but it was just weird. Her name is Mary. I can't remember her last name, um, but it was weird because it was like, I think I don't think her family, it was my first time where they didn't expect there to be a comedian there. Right. right. So that was, I was new to that whole experience too, where I just thought like, oh, this is cool. I'm doing a show. And then I came out first and it was her entire family. And they were like, who is he? You know? Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I did my dumb, you know, map quest jokes. And I think I had a, you know, joke about the weather, cutting edge stuff, you know? Um, so yeah, and I did that, and she gave me 150. My third paid gig, and that's all <laughs> I remember. That's all I remember, John. Please. Some guy saw me perform and said, mm. "Would you perform at a an office party?" Mm. He goes, "I'm going to pay you three hundred dollars, which was more than I made at my secretarial job for the week. So I wow. took the day off, and." He said, I want you to dress up like you're the uh, HR, hmm. <laughs> human resources. <laughs> wow. It goes from, it gets worse. Okay. Then he goes, what I want you to do is like say a few of these things. And he goes, I'll write a script for you. So he wrote me the script about HR. And then he had me tell some like roast joke which is not my thing. Right, like, right, right. Nikki Glaser is the queen of yes. that. I so funny. Could, I can't do that to save my life. But um but he had written them. Mm -hmm. So he didn't tell me that he wasn't going to be there. <laughs> 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 so I'm insulting <laughs> these people. And they think I'm from HR. Oh like my they don't, God. They don't get that I'm a comedian. That's hilarious. And so I pocketed the $300 and haven't thought about it since then until just Beautiful. now. <laughs> oh my God. I had, uh, I had one gig. Uh, um, and this is, this is well into, I'm already doing, you know, stuff on the road. I'm doing stuff in New York. And um, my, theater arts teacher that I kept in touch with from high school, just a very nice one. She, it's funny. She actually went to college with Jay Leno. So Emerson. yes, she went to Emerson. So, um, so did Dennis so, Leary. Oh my God. That's right. Oh my God. And Stephen is, Wright. Yes. Stephen. Oh, Stephen Wright is uh, fucking amazing. Um, and, uh, but yeah, so she went to Emerson. She went to 
college Jay, and she used to tell us stories like Jay would work out, you know, he'd get his friends and she was one of them in a group and be like, Hey, I'm doing this in New York, you know, uh, but running his material. Right. So that was cool. So anyway, she and I kept in touch and I was doing stand up or whatever. And they were doing this thing for, um, like a benefit show. And she was like, would you come and be the comedian? We're raising money for the kids to go do, to go see some play or go do some thing or whatever. And I was like, absolutely. I'd love to do it. So um, I'm like, just who's, it's not for the kids, right? She's like, no, absolutely not. It's like, it's not for the kids. It's for the adults and the parents and stuff. And they had it at a bar in Seaside. But I don't know if you've ever been to Jersey, like the Seaside Heights, like the boardwalk area. I, I'm familiar with it. Okay. It's like Snooky. Yes. Yeah, I just want to make sure you understand okay. it's pure trash. So, <laughs> <laughs> just so you get the vibe. So, I'm okay. like, yeah, yeah, all right. So, it's this bar that I remember going to, you know, with friends and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, okay, that's fine. And uh, I get there. And I'm not filthy, but I'm not thinking, you know, whatever. I get there. And there's just, there's fucking children everywhere. And I was just like, w -w 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 what's going on? Like, what are they, why are there kids here? And they rented out the whole, the parents, because they, you know, had money in this town. They rented out the whole place. And then they still had bartenders there and people doing the bar. But all these fucking kids were, like, grinding on the dance floor, doing whatever. And, like, where the stage, so they're in front of the stage. And I'm like, this is nightmare. This is a nightmare situation. So I, like, went up to her and I was like, I, I'm, it's okay if you don't, I'm not, I don't have to go on. Like, this is not a good invite. She's like, she's plastered. She's like, you're fine. <laughs> all the <laughs> It's like all the parents fine. Everything's fine. And I was like, okay, all right, fuck it. Let's do this. And I, you know, because you, that's the other thing too about comedians is like, I know we have that fight or flight thing where every oh, fiber of yeah. our being is like, you need to leave. But then there's that little party that's like, nah, let's get the money and stay. So anyway, I do the gig uh, and I get up there and I, and I'm like five minutes in. And by the way, the, the high school kids are all seniors. They're loving it. I'm I'm in the thing. They stop dancing. They're all facing me, and of course, there's this like Christian conservative dad or whatever. And I'm not doing anything horrible either, by the way. Like I'm still trying to take. I can taper my own whatever. But even what I was doing at the time, because I was like doing high school stuff and making fun of the parents for drinking or whatever. And uh, <laughs> I remember my theater arts teachers like came up. And, and took the mic. She's like, let's hear it for whatever. She's like, you need to get the fuck out of here now. <laughs> I was like, what? And she's like, three, like gave me three hundred dollars. It was like, she's like, just go, don't look back. I'm so sorry. And I, and I had to like get it. And like, and one of the dads like followed me out. It was like, oh, I can't believe you would do such a thing. And I was like, I don't know what I did. <laughs> I was like, I did my job. I'm you did your up. job. Yeah. They didn't tell you. Right. And yeah. Yeah. That's happened. Uh, Oh, so weird. But I was like, oh, Jesus Christ. But that the, you saying you got 300 bucks for uh, doing that thing reminded me of it. That has happened so many times. I performed at somebody in somebody's backyard in Long Island oh. for, for somebody's 50th birthday party. The kids found me. Their mm -hmm. kids found me. So, but there were kids all over and I didn't realize that. But the right. weird thing this has nothing to do with the kids. Cause I just, mm -hmm. I figured I, I just wouldn't swear. And I, if I right. said something innuendo, they wouldn't get it anyway. So, right. um, but I had to follow a Beatlemania um, cover band, but anyway, so <laughs> I, I say in my act, I go, I'm from Long Island originally. And then people clap. And then I go, mm -hmm. um, Roslyn and then they clap and then I go 110 Crescent Lane <laughs> and um so anyway this is so weird so I get back into my car and my phone says do you want to go to 110 Crescent Lane oh like you know on the, on the map yeah and oh that was God. when I felt I felt really loved somebody was listening that's <laughs> <laughs> So for like nine months over the pandemic, I was trying to get Siri's attention. And then my husband one day goes, you know, that's Alexa. <laughs> and so, but before you were talking about not wanting to clean the dishes and I, oh yeah, I have to tell you, I, over the pandemic, I discovered the secret to cleaning. I told, Ooh. I, I know. It's poor vision. <laughs> like clean at night without sufficient lighting, take your right. glasses off. 
It is so fast. <laughs> that's great. I will. I'm. I will take that. I will take you up on that. I can't see shit without my glasses. So that's a good point. That's a really good point. Especially if somebody asks you to do it, then you just be like, "Listen, babe, I want to. I just can't. I can't see. I mean, I'm trying. <laughs> like, you're not even using a sponge. Uh, <laughs> like, oh, really? I don't realize. Um, that's awesome. I, I wanted to ask you because how long are you? Are you? Do you want to get out of here in an hour? Because it's been an hour, but I can keep talking. We, we, we can keep I have going. a few more minutes, but um, fantastic. You'll cut that out. I loved. <laughs> yes, I love. Um, I love to keep going, but um, so let me ask you. Let me ask you a couple questions real quick about because I liked. Um, I loved you on AGT, and Thank I you. loved that Howard picked you. I watched that. I was glued. I don't. I don't watch a lot of the AGT stuff, but when it's somebody that I really truly enjoy, it's nice to you know root for somebody for a change instead of you know people I don't fucking know. And I'm like, right. take well, it or leave I, it. I watched Tom Cotter, who was on yes, a couple of too. seasons before me, and that inspired me i was like that looks like fun he can do it yeah. i can do it so Absolutely. i'm glad i did it i met the most amazing people i'm still friends with the winner from my year matt franco who has his oh. own his own magi magic show in vegas at the links that's awesome yeah he's great yeah and um i became friends with rachel butera who's on Howard sometimes doing voices. She's yep. hysterical. She's from Jersey. She is like this. Mm -hmm. She's just one of my favorite people. Yeah. And um, so I feel like I'm really glad I did it for that. And I got a little exposure and then I have something to talk about. But the truth is, yes, Howard brought me back, but mm -hmm. I never met him other than oh, other than be my other than okay. from the stage. And mm, wow. um, I loved him. I love him. Yeah, I love he's him. I think yeah. he's brilliant and hilarious. And I wanted to I wanted to introduce my husband to him. That's really what yeah. I wanted. We need to get a but, movement then when you're on a show, because that's what I was gonna say. He seemed to really be taken with you. And now I'm waiting for the, you know, the Wendy Lieben Howard moment. And uh that's uh oh, we're gonna we're gonna put we're gonna blast it everywhere online now. We're gonna get a petition going. <laughs> Oh, it's water under the bridge. <laughs> um, I, so now you're doing um, funny women of a certain. We can talk about that, right? I can cut that out yeah. too if we can't talk. Okay, great. Okay, good. <laughs> so I was like, plug it after or before. Um, but uh, no, funny women of a certain age. Um, I love Carol. And now you got. You said you guys have been friends for a long time. Was that what were who were the comics on your scene when you were coming up with this? Carol, one of them. Well, I started in Boston. Because okay. I went to school there and then I just stayed there and had day jobs and did stand up at night. Mm -hmm. And um, well, yeah, that's when you do it, Wendy. But um, <laughs> <laughs> the comics around me were Brian Kiley, who mm -hmm. was um, Conan's head monologue writer from yeah. the whole time, I think. Yeah. And he's one of my favorite comedians to this day, Brian Kiley. He's. Um... Colin Quinn's cousin, right? No, wrong. Nope, I'm wrong. No, that is a guy in New York. Yes, I'm so dumb. Um, and I love him too, but I'm blanking on his name because I'm me too. 63. Um, <laughs> but. <laughs> oh, it's so great. I could have babysat for you. <laughs> I, I mean it's still a, I'm, the option's still there I can't take care of myself obviously uh, one of the kids that I babysat for is my friend on Facebook now and he's bald oh. and that's just totally weird wow that is weird a lot of dudes go like bald I, I, mean, I, should, I shouldn't say anything about it but um, <laughs> this is a wig uh, no I a lot of <laughs> <laughs> a lot of a lot of my i mean it, it's amazing how many dudes go bald or whatever i remember i can't remember who it was exactly but one of the uh do you know brian mckim or tracy skeen i do okay they're in vegas yes tracy threatened me when i was younger because she was like if you don't fucking talk about your hair on stage <laughs> she's like i will kill you yeah she's you like, do You're the have great hair Thank you. I appreciate that. But she was like, you're one of the only, com she's like, you like, she's like, how many male comedians do you know with hair? And I was like, I, none? I don't know. <laughs> she was like, she was like, but she's like, you have a full head of hair. She's like, everybody else I know is going bald. And I was like, oh, do you do uh, a bit about your hair? 
I did. I do. Well, now that it's like this, I have like one joke where I just, and because of the, I grew out the beard a little bit more. I just say, I, uh, you know, over the pandemic, I wound up looking like the dude who gave Jenny AIDS and Forrest Gump. Um, and, uh, so that's one of my, and then, uh, but when I had it, I had it, like, it was always a little longer and it was, uh, like a, a little poofy, like at the top, cause whatever. And I would say stuff about like, just throw away lines where I would say, you know, I don't do this in my hair cause I think it looks good. I do it for height. Like I would do it in between dating stuff so that it would, it would just nicely flow all together. And I did, I, I did like maybe a couple other there's like a couple things like that that I would just throw in there, little pieces I, of it. I just I told you I was watching Cheers, and yes. Ted Ted Danson takes his toupee off in in season eleven. Yes, in to, to Carla because she's having a um like a rough time, and he's like, you know, right. we're all perfect. Yeah, because she had slept with Paul. <laughs> yes, she had, but yeah, and then um, so he was like, "Don't feel so bad, sweetheart," and then he takes his wig off, and I'm like, yeah. "Is that?" Did they put a ball cap under that, or like? No, he was losing his hair. Really? Oh. Yep. Yeah, he was straight up losing his hair, and then I that was a huge thing. Fucking love him. <laughs> I just love Ted Danson. Me too. I, he's the best. I want to see the new show he's in, The Mayor. Oh, me too. I want to see. Did you like him in A Good Place? Did you watch A Good Place? I did. I I. I didn't see the last season of The Good Place. I saw oh, okay, the no. last episode of the last. Oh, okay. <laughs> like oh, I, I, I was like, I don't even have anything to worry about. <laughs> right, um, but um, he's just good in everything. He is Ted Danson, in, especially in Curb. In Curb, he's probably oh my God. as himself one of my favorite things he's ever done. Yes. Um. Yeah, we should have. I'm just realizing this now. We should have a classic TV podcast because I feel like we watched a lot of the same shit over the pandemic. <laughs> well, I How also watched. Taxi? I never got into taxi. Oh my god! <gasps> I okay, know. I understand. If there's should any I, episode, should I watch it now? Yes, you should. Because I love Mary Lou Henner and I love oh. Danny DeVito. Yeah. Oh, then you then okay. There's one episode you got to find. I may text it to you because I'm a psycho. Um, but uh, there's an episode where um, Christopher Lloyd's character, Jim, has these he has these dreams that uh, people think come to life. So he has this dream about um, Judd Hirsch's character, Alex. And at the end of it, he can't remember. So obviously, Alex is supposed to die at the end of the dream. Well, Louis takes this seriously, and he thinks he's saving his life because uh, Alex winds up like home alone. And so Louis trying to get him out of his apartment before midnight. <laughs> <laughs> and I swear to God, you'll laugh it's here. Funny. It's one of the funniest. I mean, it's just it's just Danny DeVito and Judd Hirsch at the end of this thing, and it is has some of the best fucking lines. Uh, it's so good. Well, maybe that's what I have to start because we literally finished Cheers yesterday, oh, and yes. I've never seen more than two episodes of Taxi. Oh yeah, I know, I know. Mm -hmm. um, I also loved. You probably didn't love the nanny. I loved the nanny i like you probably were born yeah that's not your show um yeah i also but love I like, I like fran drescher and i yeah i love fran drescher i've met her um and um i i i, I think i watched the nanny but like i don't know it well enough like i saw it in in between like reruns of other things so, so i never really got into it but i know it's a good like you know when you see something and you're like i get that that's a really funny show but it probably just wasn't for me Right, exactly. Right. That's yeah. like ta taxi for me. <laughs> I, I totally, uh, that makes total sense to me. Yes. So, <clears throat> I have to go cook dinner. Yes. I'm sorry, yeah. But thank no, you. No, it's Seriously. okay. I loved uh, oh. talking to you. I love talking to you. Before you go, one thing. If you could tell your younger self um, something mm -hmm. that you know now, what would it be? Oh, um, to not worry about your hair <laughs> because I, I I spent a, too much time fixing my hair mm. and I always thought if I had spent less time fixing my hair and more time writing jokes <laughs> <laughs> well, well your hair is lovely 
Thank you. Thank you so much. I I wanted to follow up on something I said earlier, Hmm. or you had asked me earlier if I would adopt you. Oh, yes, please. And I'm thinking about it. (laughs) That's all I'm asking. Just give a little thought. (laughs) Thank you so much for coming on. You're adorable. I, I love you. You're you. one of my, seriously, comics, people, everything. You, I, I'm so glad you came on to do you. this. Let me know when you're coming back to LA. I absolutely will. Thank you so much. Okay. Peace. Bye okay. for now. Bye. Dystopia Tonight.